bear with me one second. So the question is, Jonathan, how did your date go goes this weekend? Goes this weekend. Go, how did your date go this weekend? <laughs> All right, folks. I shared in my previous uh, live stream um, that I, I shared a story of, that relates to anxious attachment style and what how that can manifest itself because I was experiencing uh, this. Um, I was experiencing anxiousness prior to meeting someone for the first time. Now, I want to give a little bit of context to this. And by the way, this the video or the the um, the clip of what I shared is going to be aired in a few days. So just a little heads up. But give a quick backstory. I connected with woman with a woman through a dating app. We had about four or five text messages exchanges that led to um, to a phone call. First off, I was very attracted to her photographs, uh, which is rare because I got to tell you, most of you women put shitty, horrific dating profiles out there. I can't believe how terrible 99 out of 100 dating profiles are. But she had, you know, quality photographs of herself and I liked what she wrote. And so we had a nice exchange back and forth. And then we got on the phone. And I really clicked with her. I mean, I was really clicking with her. I mean, I was like, I was finding myself unusually attracted to her. And I went to bed that night, actually rather anxious going to bed because I was thinking about this person. She happened to be traveling, so she wasn't going to be back in town for about a week. And so I, I shared this publicly, but I got really incredibly anxious about meeting this person. Now, my anxiousness was based on two things. I was incredibly excited, incredibly excited. In fact, I was in a state of limerence. And limerence means extreme infatuation. I was experiencing a high level of infatuation. But then I did the most, the worst thing of all. I started to project an expectation on a potential future with this person. I started to project, um, a pro a project a potential future with this person, an expectation of a potential future. And that was creating a tremendous amount of anxiety for me. I was experiencing a ton of anxiety. Now, part of that anxiety, we because as we were text messaging in between the telephone calls, and we spoke four times cumulatively, a couple hours each time, our text messaging communication style was rather dif different than one another. I'm very demonstrative. I'm very effusive. I'm very flirty. And she's very matter of fact. Very blunt, curt, matter of fact. That's just the way she communicates. And I was feeling like she doesn't like me. Is she even interested in me? And I was experiencing what so many of my female clients experience. I was living this and at an intense level, at an intense level. Now, as I explored what was coming up for me, I will say this. After Connor passed away, I can tell you my heart is far more tender now than it was in the past. I feel, especially when you've had one experience after another, after another, that doesn't work out. It wears on you emotionally. It, it sucks the life out of you when you make effort and then it goes nowhere and you make effort and it goes nowhere and you make effort. And after a while, and I've been feeling a lot of what my clients feel. Now, what I think makes me unique is that I'm aware of my feelings. I'm aware of my feelings. And, and I'm certainly, you know, I, I do my best to manage my feelings. In other words, everything I'm sharing with you was an internal dialogue going inside of me. It wasn't anything outwardly happening. It was inwardly happening. I then found myself wishing she would cancel the date. I was literally wishing she would cancel the date because the anxiety was so intense. I wanted the anxiety to stop. And if she canceled it, that would have stopped the anxiety. Now, I'm going to say on a, on a cognitive level, I was witnessing this, but I also know through experience that this was my own fear that was coming up, my own fear, my own anxieties, my own garbage of years upon years upon years of crap that I've experienced in my life. It isn't, it isn't who I am per se at my, well, on some level, it is my core, but yet, like I said earlier, we're all experienced. I'm not good enough. I'm not lovable. I'm not likable. 
This is why this whole narrative of, you know, men are so strong and confident and everything. Most guys, believe it or not, if, by the way, men with extreme bravado, they come off oftentimes like assholes. They're insecure as well. It's just, there's so much masking going on. There's so much masking going on that you can't even see what's really happening on the inside. I just happen to be aware of my emotions as I shared in the previous video and I could manage it. So let me fast forward because the question was, how was the date? So it turned out we got together Sunday, which happened to be yesterday. And we got together just after lunch um, or shortly after lunch. And we got together for, um, we actually went out for a, a, a late after, or early dinner. And as we were connecting with each other, we had the blessing to spend quite a few hours together. I think we I can't remember if we spent five or six hours together. I shared with her what I was experiencing, what I was feeling. Now, I shared a little bit this before, but what I didn't share with this, I literally had, I, I had this wish of canceling the date because the anxiety was so high. And because I was experiencing that fear of not being liked, that fear of not being liked. And what's interesting is confident as I am, and I've got thousands upon thousands of women on YouTube that reach out and say they date me in a heartbeat and everything. I was experiencing a very normal, I'm afraid I'm not being liked in this moment because our communication style was a little bit different. Well, the first thing she said to me when she saw me was, oh my God, you're so much better looking than your pictures, which I really was flattered and appreciated. And she looks stunning. And as I said, we went out and had lunch and we or a bite to eat and we shared what was coming up for us. And we really had a great time. I'm so grateful that I overcame that fear. Part of that fear was because I created this entire story or an expectation on a future before I ever met someone. Now, this isn't common to most men. It's certainly common to a lot of women who do this, but this is common whenever we feel attraction, whenever we feel uh, infatuation, when we're feeling that little bit of limerence. And it's a very common feeling to get that way. What's most important, and as I shared earlier, was just the awareness of what was going on inside of me. And, and ultimately, how do we overcome a fear? By facing it head on. I didn't allow my fear to stop me from wanting to see what could happen here. And yet so many women in particular cancel date at last minute or guys cancel dates at last minute because of a fear. Because the reality today is we are, again, as I shared earlier, we are meeting total strangers. And it's very difficult to feel emotionally safe when you're meeting a stranger. And let me say this, dating is putting your heart out there. It takes a lot of courage to put your heart out there over and over and over again and not be unscathed. It takes a tremendous amount of courage. And many people, particularly women, give up on the process of trying to find a mate because of that fear. All I can say is this, and I've learned, and who knows, this might be the last first kiss I ever have, or it might be someone I just used to know, somebody I used to know. What I know most important is when you fall off the horse seven times, you get back eight times. And my invitation for everyone is to hold that space of hope, hold that space of, of knowing that there is a person out there that's aligned to, that shares your values, that your lifestyles are blendable and they have the emotional maturity to have those deeper intimate conversations. And what I appreciated most about this person is she has a level of depth, a level of curiosity. She loves psychology as much as I do. We seem to like a lot of the same things, but more importantly, she has that deep desire to go beyond the surface of a relationship instead of, how's your day going? I hope you had a good day. Did you have a good day? I hope you had a blessed day because most people these days are focused on the surface of attraction and they're not getting to the heart of what matters most and through radical honesty. And that's what I invite everybody to do is be radically honest with one another without compromising a boundary. Okay, I'm not suggesting that, but radical honesty is how we build intimacy into me, you see. And so um, that's the update on the date. We do hope to see each other maybe once before the holidays is over, but certainly after the holidays, because uh, each one of us is traveling a little bit. 
Um, I'm hopeful, but at the same time, I also recognize, and by the way, my anxiety level has dropped dramatically. My anxiety level has dropped dramatically. In fact, I now feel in my empowerment because we had this great chat with one another and we opened our heart from a compassionate place and not the ex not the place of dominance, not the place of, you know, of romance, but a place of heart. And if you're not familiar with the book, if the Buddha dated, if the Buddha dated, I highly recommend reading this because it throws out all the bullshit gender rhetoric and says, how can we connect at a heart centered space? And she did watch a number of my videos and she thought it was adorable that she recognizes that these, and by the way, she has a great collection of books that are also personal development books, which I appreciate. So I invite everyone to get at that heart centered space instead of the darn stupid traditional gender rhetoric, expectation based way of dating. I invite everyone to come from a heart centered way of dating. So again, I want to thank that person for the question. Let me find it real quick. Um, well, anyway, I think you get the gist of where I'm going. Oh, here it is. Hey, thanks so much for that question. Uh, Jonathan, how'd your date go? I really appreciate it. All right, let's scroll through here. 